20 years ago, being a rookie player in my first professional season in the year 2000, set high goals, set high expectations, and met a lot of those. I had five wins that season, including a, a big win up in uh, Toronto, Ontario, the Toronto Island Open. It was a big A-tier event. I uh, ended up beating the 1999 world champion, the reigning world champion, Ron Russell. I was one of the first rookies to win a tournament of that caliber. For me, I think it proved a lot to myself to what I could do beyond um, winning the smaller tournaments. Now I realize I could be on the big time and, and play against the best players. I qualified the year before in 1999 for the USDGC as an amateur and just didn't get an opportunity to travel down there and play that event. Well, by the time it came around to 2000, me being professional now, I'm gonna play all the biggest events I can. And I went down there in, in 2000 to give my first try at the USDGC at Winthrop in Rock Hill, South Carolina. I got down there early, was practicing, and uh, no other than Mr. Dave Dunapace walked up to me, you know, owner event of uh, the mad scientist behind all the amazing discs that we throw. We have a quick exchange, quick little conversation, and through my progress and what I accomplished throughout the season up to that point, he had welcomed me to join Team Innova. He hands me a prototype champion edition Firebird and he hands it to me, he's like, hey, try this out, throw it around, let me know what you think. Welcome to Team Innova. I'm feeling it now, I'm probably overconfident at that point. I went out there and shot the highest score I've ever shot on that course in 15 years playing it and uh, ended up shooting at 81 or something crazy. It was, it was horrendous. Really hard to come back from that. Finished the tournament out, didn't cash, didn't play all that well, but at the end of every USDGC, there's always a distance contest across the lake. I end up going out there and, and throwing some of the farthest drives of my life. Even though I didn't compete that well at the tournament, I still kind of redeemed myself by, by winning the distance contest there. I'm probably considered one of the first touring professionals. So after my rookie year in 2000, considering a lot of things, and I get a call up on that winter um, sometime before Christmas by Dave Felberg, who was already on tour. He called me up and said, Al Shack and Sue Stevens are gonna kind of do their own thing. They're a couple, they're gonna get their own motor home and travel, and it's just me and Todd Branch. And we have room, and would you like to join us on the disc golf tour? That sounds like a dream. And so it was me, Dave Felberg, and Todd Branch traveling around the country playing tournaments every single weekend. And that was the early tour years for me. 2008, another tour year, traveling around. It was my 10th year at that point, being a professional player. Myself, personally, looking at so many idols of mine, you know, Ken Climo and Barry Schultz, you know, pinnacle, iconic, Hall of Fame players. They're world champions. And that was something I always wanted for myself, was to be a world champion, kind of earn, earn that spot you know, among the elite. And uh, going into the 2009 season, I think I was more on a mission than anything. Knowing that the World Championships was in Kansas City, Missouri. Kansas City courses, they fit my gameplay so well. And I've played good at Kansas City wide open tournaments in years previous to that. But knowing that the world is going to be there and having a major tournament there, I think I was a little more amped up. And I go out that first round and just play just a stellar round. End up going through the course shooting a 53 which was a 13 down to open up Worlds and shoot the course record to open up the World Championships, taking a four or five stroke lead. And there's a few kind of ups and downs which you're gonna kind of have throughout a week of Worlds. It's seven rounds, it's seven and a half rounds when you include the final nine. And so toward the end of the week, I think it was like the fourth or fifth round, I didn't have a great round and I uh, let a lot of players kind of catch up to me. Um, I was kind of kind of down. I was like, man, I wasn't feeling it. I was kind of feeling like I was low on energy. I need to keep it going. And I uh, had a good long talk with my good friend, Nate Doss. And he's like, man, you only have two options. You can either give up now and let him, let him overtake you, or you can give it all you got and win this thing. I shoot nine down at Waterworks in the semifinal round to retake the lead by two strokes over Josh Anthon. Uh, Valerie, my sister, I told her, you win yours, I'll win mine. It was kind of a kind of an agreement before the week. And she went out there, won her final nine, you know, she won her world title, her third consecutive world title. I go out there, I'm playing steady, I'm playing good. And it comes down to this little stretch in the middle where it's all these short little par three holes. 
and I remember missing a putt and then missing another and then just kind of compounding, missing another. Meanwhile, Josh Anthon birdies three straight holes in a row to tie me up. We go into the final hole, the ninth hole, we both par it and we're still tied. We go into a sudden death playoff and we ended up taking it to the fifth hole. It was a, a short uphill hole, about 340 feet. He pulled his shot to the right side, about 40 feet wide right. I threw a Firebird uphill into the howling headwind and put it about 22 feet. He ends up missing the putt, 40 footer, wide right. Crazy, just overtaking feeling to have this presented to you. You got a 22 footer for the win. Me in the basket, everything out of my hand, everything just erupted. Everything just went nuts. It went crazy. I knew out of my hand it was in. Incredible moment. Winning a, a disc golf world title along my side of my sister, you know, being a brother and sister win the same year in 2009. It's never been done that siblings win the worlds in the same year. My father, Leroy, and my mom, Sharon, being there present when I won the worlds and Valerie and, and friends and family and thousands of other spectators, it, was, it meant a lot, you know, it was that it was that 10 year quest to be the best. And following that tournament there into the, into the fall, I ended up gaining the number one rank in the world. And it was another big goal and a big accomplishment, not only to win the world title, but to be considered the best player in the world. So among being a player and an ambassador, yeah, I just had an opportunity to play a lot of unique, really special, fun courses throughout the country and throughout the world and all the countries I've been to. Let's throw it back to 2018 when I played my thousandth disc golf course. So we're out here at Glen Eagles Disc Golf Course in San Francisco, California. And I'm here to play my thousandth disc golf course in 21 countries, 48 states. And this is number four digit, 1,000 here on this property. Let's start it off. just finished playing my thousandth disc golf course played throughout the world. Now it all started at a very young age. I've been playing disc golf for over 30 years and uh, my first disc golf course I ever played was my home course, Roscoe Ewing Park in Medina, Ohio. I've been every world championship since 91. I have documentation playing my 700th course in the US on a, on a road trip last, uh, last spring after the Masters Cup in Flagstaff, Arizona. And then I remember playing my 200th course international course in uh, in Stockholm um, last summer. Through a thousand courses, I got a chance to play 15,985 unique holes. I think it makes me a better course designer. Um, through all the years experience playing these courses, playing all these unique holes, adds another aspect to how I design courses and I'm very critical on how I do that. So being out here at the Glen Eagles golf course, very momentous occasion to play my thousandth disc golf course here. My dad in spirit to share in the moment. My mom here, my sister, and then my brother-in-law Nate, who mean a lot to me to share in this, uh, you know, great, great time. But also that same day as I walked off and played my thousandth, I dedicated my thousandth disc golf course to my grandfather who passed that exact same day. That's what kind of keeps me going. You know, the people in my life that share these experiences keep me going to you know do more of these experiences and, and do it for myself but also do it for the sport as we grow the sport together it's only getting bigger and better and it's exciting to see you know where the future of disc golf is going to take us it's cool to see that transition you know the the highlights of my career from the early on stages of being a rookie pro traveling and playing and competing and teaching and coaching and still doing everything that I've always wanted to do within the sport, but transitioning maybe from the competitive player to more the disc golf ambassador, which I am now these days. Doing a lot more to promote the sport on so many levels. I'm trying to teach these younger players, you know, to really respect and appreciate what this beautiful sport is. You know, I'm trying to design more courses and, and try to establish myself as a disc golf course designer and try to give back that way to leave my legacy. And so with all that being said, I want to thank Innova Champion Discs for having the faith in me, having Dave Donapace walk up to me and invite me on Team Innova in the year 2000, all the way into 2019, where we sit now 20 years later. It's been an incredible 20 years 